Hello friends, I'm Professor John Gallagher and welcome to CircuitPython School, an introduction to CircuitPython for absolute beginners. In this lesson I'll demonstrate how you can install or upgrade CircuitPython on a Circuit Playground Bluefruit board, and I'll talk about how you can learn how to do this for other boards as well. The process is similar. So let's get started, Maker. Now I'm going to show you how you can update the Circuit Playground Bluefruit or CPB board, but if you have a different board, know that Adafruit publishes a learn guide for each board, and you can find that learn guide by searching for Adafruit, learn guide, and the name of your board. The guide should have a CircuitPython section that gives specific information on how to install CircuitPython on your board. Now to follow along, my students will need their Circuit Playground Bluefruit board, a micro USB data cable, be sure to get a data cable. Some cables are charge only, but you need a data cable to transfer data from your computer to your board. And that's it. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that our board is running the very latest version of CircuitPython. If you have a new board, these steps will put CircuitPython on the board, and if your board already has CircuitPython installed, these steps will make sure that you've upgraded to the latest version. So to do this, open a browser and head to circuitpython.org. Click Downloads. Scroll and find the board that we're using, Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Click that. It'll open a new page, then click on the Download UF2 button. Your browser is probably showing a number that's later than the one that's shown here. The open source team behind CircuitPython is always updating the language with new features and better stability. So just get the latest one listed. This will download a file with a .uf2 extension at the end. And this file will let us put CircuitPython on our board. Now do note that the .uf2 file is specific to the type of board that you're working with. If you use a different board in the future, for example, later in the semester, my students switch to using a Raspberry Pi Pico W board, then you'll want to make sure that you download the right uf2 file to use with that board. After clicking download, your browser might save this file to your downloads folder. I have my browser configured to ask where I want to save this, so I'm going to save mine to the desktop. And we just downloaded a .uf2 file that we'll use to put CircuitPython on the board. So now I'll minimize my browser. My uf2 file is saved to the desktop. You might need to open your downloads file to find yours. And now let's set up your CPB to accept the .uf2 file that we just downloaded. To do this, plug your USB cable into your computer, then plug the micro USB end into your CPB. And it's very important to make sure that you're using a data cable. Many cables are charge only, so if for some reason your CPB doesn't show up in the desktop like I'm about to demonstrate, you might be using the wrong cable. Now you should see your board flash. Starting with CircuitPython 7, boards with NeoPixel lights will flash yellow first, and those with Bluetooth like the CPB will then flash blue even faster, just for about a second. I'll warn my students too that there may be some old code left on your board by previous students, so don't be startled if your board starts to do something, and if you bought a brand new board, you'll probably see this swirling rainbow pattern. Looks cool, but this is about to go away. Now you'll probably see a device mounted on your desktop with the name CircuitPi. There's a chance it might show up with the name CPlay Boot. If it says CircuitPi, it just means the board was already configured to run an earlier version of CircuitPython, but you'll want to follow these steps anyway. This is going to ensure that your device has the latest version of CircuitPython, which should be included in the UF2 file that you just downloaded. So with your CPB plugged into the data cable and the other end is plugged into your computer, double tap the reset button. That's the button right in the center of the CPB. Tap, tap, just like that. You should see the device flash, then the circle of LEDs on the device will light up green, and you'll see a new device mounted on your computer named CPlay Boot. That's still our Circuit Playground Bluefruit board, but it's now in what's called bootloader mode. That means it's ready to have CircuitPython installed on it by dragging the UF2 file onto CPlay Boot. Now, if you're using a Circuit Playground, you do want to make absolutely sure that your device is mounted with the name CPlay Boot. The device shouldn't say CircuitPi. CPlay Boot, not CircuitPi, is what we want because that means we're in what's called bootloader mode. And we need to be in bootloader mode, CPlay Boot, so that we can drag the UF2 file over onto our board. You never want to drag the UF2 file over if it says CircuitPi. That'll just put an extra file on your device and it'll take up extra space. And more importantly, it won't update CircuitPython. If your device says CircuitPi, just double tap that reset button again. That should put the device into bootloader mode. Again, it'll be named CPlay boot. You'll also see the ring of LED lights show up as a solid green. Do not continue if your device says CircuitPi. Now after doing this, if your board flashes green, but then right away flashes and stays red, then you're likely using an older CPB that needs a little bit of TLC. I'll put a link in the description for more info on that case. But if your board is plugged into your computer, it's named CPlay Boot, and all the lights are green, then drag the UF2 file that you just downloaded, that's the one that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore Circuit Playground, and drop it into CPlay Boot. Now this file will copy over. When a board's plugged into a computer like this, it acts sort of like a thumb drive, and you can just drag files onto the board to copy them over. If you have a Mac, you might get this error stating that the operation can't be completed because some data can't be read or written. If you see that error, ignore it. It's not a problem, just click OK. 
the CPlay Boot device will dismount from your computer and you'll see a new device mounted on your computer named CircuitPy. Congratulations! You've just configured your CPB to run CircuitPython. By the way, if you ever have a CPB that you haven't used in a while and you're wondering what version of CircuitPython is installed on the board, just plug it in, open the CircuitPy volume when it mounts, then open up the boot underscore out dot txt file and you'll see the version that's installed and the date that version was created. Now, quick recap, we just upgraded our board to run the latest version of CircuitPython, and your board should mount to your computer with the name CircuitPy anytime you plug your board into the computer. The CPlay boot mode was only used to upgrade our board. That's when we dragged the UF2 file over to the board. And pro tip, you should never see a UF2 file inside your board when it's in CircuitPy mode. If you see a UF2 in there, just delete it. It's just taking up space. So here's a quick recap of the steps to install or upgrade CircuitPython. You can use this as a crib sheet. Visit circuitpython.org, click on download, and find and download the UF2 file for your specific board. Then plug your board into your computer using a data cable. Put the board in bootloader mode for a CPB that involves just double tapping the reset button. If that works, you'll see a ring of solid green lights, and you'll see the board mounted on your computer with the name CPlay Boot. Then drag the UF2 file that you downloaded onto CPlay Boot that will dismount, and the board will remount with the name CircuitPy, and you're now ready for CircuitPython work. I hope you found this lesson worthwhile, and if you did, let me know, and prepare for new lessons where we'll learn to make something awesome.